This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Work Less and Do More. A listener writes in, Oh, Get It Done Guy, do you have any recommendations on how to deal with a co-worker who complains incessantly? Oh, ho, 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 we just love complainers. No, we don't. We hate complainers. They're always complaining, and we don't like their clothes. And they put two spaces after a period, even when they're typing in a proportional spaced font. And their children. Oi, my goodness. You know how every baby is automatically cute? Well, let's just say that the babies that belong to complainers are... Wait, what? Oh, oh, too soon? Oh, sorry. Never mind. Yeah, complainers suck. But you can learn to deal with them. You have to understand why complainers complain. One kind of complainer is the hidden sociopathic monster. They were passed over for a promotion that they really thought they deserved. The fact that they didn't deserve it and that the person who got the promotion did deserve it is irrelevant. They feel unappreciated, and they're just darn mad. You know what? They want to leave this place. But they can't, because then they'd lose their health insurance, so they stay with the malevolent intent of destroying the company with a thousand tiny cuts. They complain because they want to undermine your morale and enlist your aid in dismantling the deity-forsaken place once and for all. Just watch. Pretty soon, they'll be picking up 55-gallon drums of fertilizer while they ask you to drop by the hardware store and grab a couple of detonators. When they ask, just say no. Trust me on this one. Plus, an extra little bonus is that if their complaining destroys your morale so you do a bad job, they'll get promoted in your place. Yay, complainers. When a complainer is motivated by malicious psychopathy, be wary. Tell them, nicely, that you don't have time to talk right now. Avoid them and make sure to keep a paper trail so that someday your estate will be able to trace your mysterious disappearance back to them. Other complainers want validation. Not all complainers are evil demons from heck bent on destroying the world around them. Many just want validation. The things they complain about are genuinely problems for them, and they complain because they want your agreement to know that they're not being unreasonable. The way the new programmer relieves the lid to the M&M's jar half-off drives me crazy, right? Don't you think so too? Like, they should be fired for such irresponsible behavior, right? Right? Don't you agree, right? Now your response when someone needs validation is a bit tricky. If you buy into their narrative too much, they'll keep coming back for more validation for their next set of gripes. I think birds fly way too much. I mean, they clutter up the sky and probably pose a danger to helicopters. Don't you think so, too? Like, they should be exterminated for such irresponsible behavior. Don't you agree, huh? Look them straight in the eye and say sincerely. That sounds really upsetting. Do you want advice or do you just need to vent? Now, what you're doing here is validating their feelings without necessarily agreeing to the specifics. You're also sneakily naming what's going on, that they're venting, and you're even giving them the option of telling you how to deal with them. If they just need to vent, look them straight in the eye and say sympathetically, you know, that sounds really horrible. Tell me about it. And then listen quietly until they run out of steam. Not occasionally, but just empathize. Don't agree. Don't discuss. Don't multitask. Just nod and listen with your full attention. After a few minutes, they'll start to realize that they're just sitting there venting, and they'll begin to run out of steam. If they then switch to asking for advice, or if they just wanted the advice in the first place, just say, I find that my best course of action comes from the serenity prayer. Change the things I can, and accept the things I can't. You see, you've exhausted their emotional spewing by simply listening with full attention. And then you've given them advice that basically amounts to saying, Welcome to life, baby. You get to suck it up like the rest of us. In any event, if they try to complain some more, now you can gently ask, do you want to do the work to change that, or do you want to do the work to accept it? Now you've shifted the responsibility for their misery squarely onto their shoulders. Complainers generally complain about stuff that they perceive is out of their control, and once it's in their control, they might have to do something about it. So after this little maneuver, they probably won't stick around to explore how they can take back responsibility for their own life. Some complainers don't want evil or validation. They want to bond, and they think that complaining is the way to make friends. Now, if you've got this kind of complainers, just be upfront with them. You know what? I'd like to be friendly and have some good conversation. And I find that complaining kind of shuts me down, though. Could we talk about what's going right in our lives? What did you like about Rogue One? Once again, you're naming their behavior, and then you're delivering it in the context of saying that, sure, you'll be friendly as a person and you want to engage. If they really want to bond, they just might go along with your request. If they say, I really need to get this off my chest, You can say, I'm really going through a lot of my own stressors right now, 
You don't have to tell them that they are the major stressor in your life. And I really need to be more positive. Let's go our separate ways for now, and then we can get back together when we're both feeling more positive. Will this work? Maybe, maybe not. But you've called out their behavior without blaming them. You've made it clear that you are willing to hang out if they're more positive. And if they now decide to add you to the list of things to complain about, you can be proud. And if nothing that we've talked about works, make a list of everything that's going wrong in your life. And next time they start complaining, say, you're right, those birds are just way too noisy. And let me tell you about the person who almost ran me over in the crosswalk the other day. And then just commiserate to your heart's content. Don't pause for breath, just keep going. Nicely, courteously, and relentlessly. And what about politicians these days? They wear way too many suits. Speaking of which, what's up with playing cards? Am I the only one who thinks that clubs is a stupid-looking suit? Since what they're looking for is a chance for them to talk, they will pretty quickly get bored and leave. Hopefully they'll also get the message, though you really have to be careful they don't realize you're trying to out-complain them. You need to sound sincere and like your bonding, just like superglue. If you want to deal with a complainer and you can't simply have them exiled to a desert island, validate their feelings, but don't engage with their actual narratives. Listen intently until they run out of steam and then put responsibility back in their hands by asking them how they would like you to respond. You can also just tell them straight out that you want to engage around happier topics and if all else fails, be prepared to out-complain them. And if, after all that, they're still complaining, set them up on a blind date with someone you really don't like and sit at the next table in disguise to watch the fun. This is Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. I run programs to help people develop the skills they need to create an extraordinary life. If you want to know more, visit steverrobbins.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-R-R-O-B-B-I-N-S dot com. Or join my personal mailing list by texting Get It Done to 33444. You'll also get a free copy of my secret book chapter on how to build relationships that help you succeed. Work less, do more, and have a great life.